This is Mr. Higginbotham's Frog Day section. These are grass frogs. And the first thing that we're going to start with is identifying, or at least attempting to identify, the gender. Now, male frogs have a larger thumb pad on their thumb. So I suspect that this one is a male. Now, I might be wrong. A lot of times we're wrong. These are little frogs, and it's really hard to be able to tell the gender until you get inside. Some of the external anatomy that we're going to look at, um, frogs have external nares, just like we do. Nares are nostrils, and they allow scents to come in to their olfactory or sense of smell area. Um, frogs also have a tympani. This is a membrane that's equivalent to our eardrum. And this is how frogs hear. And you can kind of push around it and see that it's, there's an opening in the skull there where the frog is able to hear sound through. So it's an external eardrum. Um, on the frog's eyes is a membrane that covers it so that when it goes underwater, it can see better underwater. And it also protects it from um, and keeps their eyes moist on the land. So this is a nictitating membrane, and I'm pulling back right there, and you can see the when I pull it back, the frog's eye is actually black, and not necessarily that kind of grayish color. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is the internal, the parts on the inside of the frog's mouth. Now, in order to do that, you're not able to just open the frog's mouth very easily. So we make an incision on either side of the jaw, and go back past the eardrum and all we're really doing is dislocating the jaw so that we can open it and see inside easier. The first thing you're going to notice is the tongue is not attached to the floor of the mouth at the rear. It's actually attached at the front. So frogs can reach out with their tongue, a lot of them, and grab insects. This is not a species that necessarily does that, but they still have a tongue attached to the front. Now if we look inside on the roof of the mouth, you can see the two openings, one here and one there, those are the internal nares. The internal nares are the, where the external nares, the nostrils, open up into the mouth. And frogs have two sets of teeth. They have these outer teeth for grabbing insects and prey and holding on to them and those teeth are called the maxillary teeth. So you can't really see them, you actually have to rub and feel it's kind of uh, bristly like, almost like the seti on the earthworm. Now they also have these two specialized teeth called vomerin teeth and there's two white dots there and if you feel them they look and feel like teeth. Now these are for crushing prey. When they get an insect in their mouth they'll get it inside and then they'll crush the exoskeleton by closing their mouth and pushing it against those two maxillary teeth. And in the back we have tubes that open into the ear canal where the eardrum is and those are called eustachian tubes. The eustachian tubes are the same structures that we have that connect our nasal passage to our ears. When we get an ear infection our ears feel clogged up it's mainly because that eustachian tube is plugged and we can't hear because we get fluid behind our ears. And in the back of the mouth we can see the throat. I can see some fluid coming out here. Um, the gloss would be in the back of the opening to the esophagus. Okay, so next we need to go ahead and look at the internal anatomy. Now in order to do that we have to make uh, a couple of incisions. We're going to make an incision all from the bottom of the abdomen all the way up through the breastplate and that's actually bone up here. So the first part is only skin and when we get up here it's actually through bone. It's a little bit more difficult to cut. So you don't want to go too deeply. You want to be able to go in through the muscle and the layer of skin in order to cut so you don't damage any organs underneath. So you want to keep your scissors kind of pulled up. And we can pull the skin back and see that I did make an incision. Here's the layer of skin and underneath 
you can see the layer of muscle underneath. So I'm going to go ahead and cut the skin here on the side and we can see that the muscles of the frog's abdomen looks very similar to ours. You can see some definition in between the different muscle groups and the frog actually has kind of a little six pack going on there. So I'm going to make an incision atop the, across the top and open up the thoracic cavity that holds the heart and lungs. And I'm going to cut well over so that I actually go through the shoulder joint there to dislocate it so that the arm will come free and it will open a nice flap so that we can actually get a good look at the anatomy inside. Otherwise it doesn't want to stay open when we do that. I'm going to go ahead and cut through the muscle down here as well. I'm going to cut all the way down the side so that we can get these flaps open. Now when you open it up then we can see the internal organs and some of the tissue might be as it's doing now might be stuck to the layer of muscle by some membrane. You might have to kind of tease that membrane off. So all of our internal organs are hooked together with internal membranes called mesentery. The mesentery kind of holds everything in place so that things don't move around too much. Now, now what we need to do is pin the frog down. So I'm going to go through his arm here and get these flaps opened up so we can see inside. And I'll put two more pins on the bottoms of the flaps. So some of the structures we're going to notice right away. We see these yellow structures. These are fat bodies. Fat bodies allow a frog to store energy over a wintering period. And below that you see this long winding small tube which is the small intestine. And the small intestine is connected to the stomach. This big thing right here that large structure here, that's all the stomach. Now when a frog's stomach is this big, oftentimes we're going to find insects and things in it. And I suspect we'll find insects in this one. Now these structures right here, there's one lobe, two lobes, and three lobes. This is the frog's liver. And that's actually a blood vessel right there. If we look underneath the frog's liver, there's a tiny little sac that fits right there. Get my finger out of the way. A tiny little sac fits right there in the part of the liver. That's the gallbladder. Stores bile. And bile is a product that gets pushed that goes from the gallbladder into the stomach to help digest food. Now if we look up here in this, there's a tiny little sac around this structure. This white structure right here is the frog's tiny little three chambered heart. And if we take that, the membrane off, the membrane is called the pericardial sac, which protects the heart. We can actually see that there's different colors of the chambers of the heart. So the bottom chamber, the ventricle, is white and we see an atria up here and then another atrium right here. So those three chambers, the atria, fill the ventricle, and the ventricle pumps the blood out to the rest of the body. So in order to see any other structures down below, we're going to actually have to remove the liver first. It's one of the first organs that has to get out of the way because it's so big and on top of everything. So in order to do that, you kind of just go underneath and see where it's connected and try to cut it out from the base. And you 
you try not to cut any other tissue so that we don't damage anything that we want to take a look at. Turn it and get the other side. And I think I got most of it here. There we go. So now we can see the stomach and we can see the esophagus coming down from the stomach right here. See the heart a little better. And now what we can also see are the frog's lungs. So there's just these tiny little deflated sacs here. And there's one, there's a piece of liver left there, but here's the other lung, that brown tissue right there. And I think we can see the three chambers of the heart a little bit better now as well. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and cut the esophagus and remove the stomach, and then we'll see how long this intestine is. Again, everything's connected by this membrane called mesentery. So we can see that that small intestine, when it gets unwound, is very large. And then it opens up into the large intestine. Notice where it gets all of a sudden right here at this point where the small intestine becomes the large intestine. It's a very distinct juncture where the two join. Now, if we look underneath, you can see the fat bodies there. And we'll also need to get the fat bodies out and look underneath and find out where the kidneys are, which we got one there, it looks like, and one on the other side. And then underneath that are the reproductive structures. This looks like it is a male as there's this tiny little white tube that is the sperm duct and another one on the other side and that's just about it thanks